Yes, and how y'all doing? All right, to get us started, we'll start with Mark Weiser and Mike Griffith. Hey, Jenny, how are you? Uh, pretty good. How are you doing? Good. Um, I want to get your sense of, of how you guys feel as a defense and, and particularly, I guess, maybe the, the uh, linebackers, uh, you know, in defending the pass. Um, you, you know, obviously Mississippi State has a different uh, scheme and a different way they approach the passing game. But, but how did you all feel about, you know, how you guys did? I know you guys want to be patient, but, um, you know, were there some uh, things that, that you guys heard after the game uh, that you need to get better in in, in pass coverage? Um, we felt as a team that uh, we worked hard. It was a good team win or whatnot, but uh, there's always something that we need to work on or something we always need to get better at or whatnot. And so that game, we did play a little differently or whatnot, but now nah, like we're just moving on to next week now and like just focus on what this team has to offer. Jenny, can you just talk about the opportunities you got in front of you? I mean, obviously you're a guy that's been working hard and a really talented deep defense. Um, how good does it feel to be getting these uh, these game snaps on Saturdays? I feel real good, you know, uh, coming from linebacker, uh, I say there was, I wasn't ready. There was a lot I needed to work on. I'm starting to see like little flashes within myself, like I'm getting better or whatnot, whether that's reading keys or dropping out in coverage or whatnot. And like just seeing that, uh, that success, you, you just strive for it more and more. It's almost like a hunger, like an addiction type of thing. And it's just something I want to just keep getting better at every day. Oh, especially playing so long. That's one game I always marked down in my calendar every year. So, Next, we'll go to Seth Emerson, then Anthony Dasher. Channing, what, what has this year been like for the defense? Uh, y'all did what y'all did last year, uh, come in with this, you know, reputation for being elite, but there's been three games, obviously, that have been rougher. Is it – has it been frustrating or do y'all – like need to do soul searching or do y'all know what the problem is and you just have to fix it? Uh, I look at the defense as like my family or whatnot. And so like, I'd say we just, we know what the problem is or whatnot. And it's just a matter of time of fixing it or whatnot. Everybody being on one accord, being on one page or whatnot. And like, that's just something that everybody within themselves have to find. Um, what they need to do and whatnot. And so, like, once we all go on the same page and whatnot, uh, I feel like things will turn around. What are you not on the same page about? Uh, I say we, as a team, I want to say, like, we know what we have to do or whatnot, but – we know what we have to do, but just like the progression of doing it, just making sure everybody's doing their job or whatnot, if that makes sense. Okay. Hey, Channing, good. <laughs> hey, Channing, good to see you. Uh, can you kind of explain, uh, you mentioned a second ago, going back to play South Carolina, what are emotions are like for someone like yourself? Uh, uh, you know, from there, uh, I know a lot of people thought you would go there to, to have an opportunity to, to line up against them. What is that like for you? Not only for you, but your family as well. Uh, it's always a good experience going back home. Uh, my father is a Dogs fan, and then my mother went to the University of South Carolina herself. Mm -hmm. So that rivalry's always been pretty big in my family. Whatnot. But emotion, I went a little um, – when I was a little child, going to little games, watching Ty Gurley play in the stadium against, you know, Marshall – I mean – Marcus Lattimore, some of the great, greatest people out there were not. So, like, it's very exciting for me and we're not. But, you know, now that I get to play, it's just better feeling. Thanks. Next, we'll go to Chip Towers, then Jake Rowe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Channing, good to see you. Uh, you know, can you talk a little bit about what just the, the struggle, you know, that, that, that it's, uh, it always is at any place like Georgia just to get on the field, the development. Uh, uh, it, it seems like it's been slow in coming, but you can see now you're playing a, a lot. What has that taken to get where you are now? Uh, just a lot of film work and, like, looking deep within myself and being honest about, like, uh, what I need to do in order to progress. So, and I, I don't feel like I was taking the necessary steps before in order to get where I was. And now I feel like I'm starting to do that when I just training more and looking at more film and just doing the little things. It's always about the little things. 
if I'm not mistaken, you played a lot of defensive end and, you know, speed was really your thing in, in, in high school. Is that the transition to being inside and having to go both directions and, you know, all of that stuff, is that, was that part of the complication? Uh, yeah, I would say a little bit. It's like uh, inside linebacker, there's a lot more thinking into the game and whatnot, and a lot more formations you have to just sit down and read and whatnot. And so, like, those were some of the things that I would say. Yeah. Thank you. Channing, what what is what are the first two, two and a half, three years meant to you as far as like learning from guys like Monty and learning, uh, you know, kind of how to operate within the defense to kind of grow as a player? How, how far do you, have you come and and uh, kind of what are your goals going forward as you kind of start to get some traction? I uh, learned from guys like uh, JT, Nate Trez, Monty, just guys that always been older than me and whatnot. They've always pushed me to do better when not. Like, every time they see me hang my head down or see that I'm not getting anything, they'll always try to, like, put a helping hand out there and make sure I got it, tough love, whatever it might be. So, like, I really appreciate those guys. And I probably wouldn't be in the position I am now, like, moving forward, climbing, if it wasn't for them. So, I appreciate them for that. Next up, we'll go to Brandon Sudge, then Austin Roper. Hey, uh, Channing, following up on the whole um, South Carolina thing, can you recall um, how close it was between Georgia and South Carolina back in uh, back a couple of years ago? Um, and then also, um, how many family members are, are you going to um, have at the game on Saturday? Uh, could you elaborate on that first question? But, uh, yeah. But, yeah. So I was just – so I was just saying, like, Back when you were, back when you were a prospect, can you recall like how, like how kind of close you were to going to South Carolina, and do you remember what the, the difference was? I guess in order for you to end up at Georgia rather than staying home. Yeah, I got you. Uh, I would say. Uh, I grew up in South Carolina and whatnot, but, like, I want to explore more or whatnot. So, like, I've been home all my life. So, I wanted to get, get outside of home and whatnot. And that just – but I didn't want to be too far away from home. And, like, Georgia just take all the boxes for me at that point after I was looking out, out of state. And then for my, like, my family or whatnot, I, my little brother and my little sister – Two of my high school friends and my father would probably be at the game. So, yeah. hey Shane. Um, so given that y'all you are obviously playing South Carolina this Saturday, um, and their their quarterback situation isn't really like you know it's not that they don't really know who their starter is going to be yet. They haven't publicly said it. Um, so can you talk about kind of what is difficult about game planning for a team when you don't really know who the starting quarterback is going to be throughout the week? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, you really don't know what to expect or whatnot. And then, you know, some, like, quarterbacks are, have better uh, attributes than other quarterbacks or whatnot, and you really just don't know what to expect or whatnot. Like, I know Luke Doty played a little bit uh, last game or whatnot, and he's a really mobile dual-threat quarterback or whatnot. And so, like, you really just don't know what you're going to get. And, like, a quarterback could really change your whole, like, game plan, in my opinion. We've got time for one more quick question, if anyone would like to jump in and take it. Hey, Channing, a lot of times, you know, people outside the program, whether it's fans, media, whatever, often second guess, you know, coaching's decision on who plays when and stuff like that. Um, can you just describe from in the building the, the buy-in that, that you guys and the trust you guys have in coaches and their decisions on who plays when? Uh, can you say that again? I'm sorry. I was gonna. I was gonna say. You know, a lot of people second guess from the outside. You know, who, who plays when and stuff, and coaching decisions and stuff like that. But how much trust uh, do you guys in the in the locker room have in and what the coaches decide and 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 you know who plays and when? Uh, from Coach Smart to Coach Schumann, who are like, hey, like I trust them wholeheartedly. Like, I feel like they are gonna give us a win every week, regardless of what we do. We have full trust in our coaches and whatnot, and we know. They've been doing this for a very long time or whatnot. Like, who am I to tell a coach, like, what they need to do? I'm just getting here, like, been here for, like, three years. So, like, I'm definitely going to take the experience that they have. And, like, I came, chose to come here and come in here, and now it's time to do what we got to do. It's ultimately not just up to coaches, it's up to us as players as well to get the job done. So, yeah.